Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After Etc. and welcome back to another Cricut project. So today we are doing a Cricut slash planner slash present slash budget book project before Christmas, before January, before the new year. My mom saw somewhere online the concept of a budget book. I'm sure you've seen one or you've heard of one. It is a little book with these tiny little pockets. You have a hundred of them. They are numbered one through a hundred where you put money each and every day or each and every week or each and every month, however often you choose to save money throughout the year. She really wanted one, um, but when we were looking at them, they were $30 for a single book. And I knew, at least for me, I would prefer to do something like this with my Happy Planner. I already had a cover, I already had rings, and this cover, these pages were $8 for a whole pack. So I could do some for me and some for my mom. Um, and we got, I have, I have multiple, I have so much Happy Planner stuff that's not even funny. Now she wanted a three ring binder. So we're going to be doing that today. Um, and what all we're doing is putting all of the little plastic sleeves in our planner, in our cover, and I'm going to be showing you with your Cricut how to cut out the numbers and add them to your pockets. It's very, very simple. This is basically a vinyl project. If you already have vinyl, this cost me the $8 for the pockets, and that's it. And that was enough for mine and hers. Um, if she wanted a Happy Planner one, she decided she wanted the three ring one. So I had to spend $8 twice, um, and I guess I can have two. She can have two. If we finish a whole year's worth, I'll do another 100 and we'll do it again. Um, ideally, once you get in the habit of saving money in this way, I'll just keep going. Um, there's no reason to stop saving money ever. So we are going to get started with our Cricut cutting out the numbers for hers. And then at the end, I will show you both of them and you can decide when you're making yours, if you prefer the happy planner version or the three ring binder version. And it may be a decision not on preference, but on what you have. We're budgeting. So we're using what we have. I already have plenty planner supplies. There was no reason to spend $30 on a brand new planner. So we're gonna go ahead and get started cutting out all those numbers. In Cricut Design Space, we are going to start by uploading our SVG. You can also write out your numbers in any font that you like. You'll just need to uh, weld them in individual pairs. So like 10, the number 10 will need to be welded. Uh, the number 100 here will need to be welded. But unfortunately, even though they are all, you can see grouped, all of these individual numbers will need to be welded even within the SVG. Or when you go to click make it, what will happen is they will sort themselves just however they fit best. So you can see we have all our sixes, our threes, our eights, and that is not uh, the easiest way to do this by any means. So I've already gone through and welded everything. And this is what it will look like. Dun, 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 dun. Now you can weld them individually or you can do what I've done, which is I just selected the entire group and I welded it as one big group. So it just depends on how you'd like it to be. But this way is easier when it comes to actually putting them on your book and you need to pick up number one, number two, number three sequentially like this. If you weld all the numbers individually, number 11, number 12, number 13, it will do the same thing as before where it fits them how they fit best on your sheet and you will have to search for number one, for number two, for number three, through all of the welded pieces. So I find that once you have uploaded your entire numbers here, added to canvas, instead of, you know, doing it one at a time, which will save you vinyl, go ahead, we're gonna move number 10 here. 
for some reason he's hanging out down at the bottom. 10 in line. And we are going to select this whole first row, move them in line. And this is just how it's uploaded. It may upload perfectly fine for you, or it may upload in a slightly different configuration. If you type out all your numbers with a different font, you won't have any uploading issues, but SVGs do their own thing sometimes. It's not a huge deal. Why it doesn't want me to select them all is a whole other issue. But now we're just going to put them all in line here. There we go. And I'm going to weld the entire block. From here, we can resize this baby to be 11.5, which is the minimum amount of space for our smart vinyl so that we can just click make it and put this right on our cutting mat. I'm using smart vinyl. You can of course use a cutting mat and you can see from this boundary box that now they fit on our smart vinyl without any issues. And so even uh, saving them this way, we are going to use about 15 inches of space here. If we did not weld it as a big block, we would use less space, but again, we'd be searching for 33 and then 34 and then 35. So I think that in this kind of application, the ease of having your numbers in order is a big a plus and worth sacrificing the inch or two of vinyl that you'll waste. So we're going to go ahead and pick smart vinyl removable more pressure, load our fine point blade in, and we're going to cut this baby out of our smart vinyl. So in the real world, I have already loaded my smart vinyl right up to those wheels. We are using the roll holder, and this is just so that we don't have to cut it until it is finished. Everything is ready, so we're going to load. With smart vinyl, since it's a continuous roll, it is going to pull the material into the machine, measure that we have enough, we have more than 13 inches, so we do. Perfect, and now we will be able to hit go and it will cut out all 100 numbers. Since this is Smart Vinyl on our Maker 3, it's going to cut very quickly, but you could cut the same project with a Explore Air 3, an Explore with your Joy, you'll just need to configure uh, the setup of your actual design a little differently. Let's go. All right, so now we will slice and set this aside because we are finished. And ta -da! all of our numbers. So at this point, I like to grab some scissors, mainly because this is just a really big piece of vinyl. And so I like to cut it into smaller strips. They're easier to weed and transfer. Ta-da! So I'll do that all the way down so that I have usually two rows. You can cut it however makes sense for you, but I just like to do two rows at a time until they are all free. From here, we can go ahead, weed our design, and then start working to put them on our little packets. So, oh, the dog's having too much fun today. Let's get this weeded. And 
and it weeds pretty easily. We just have to check all the areas. Make sure we don't accidentally rip anything. So helpful, you guys. Yes, you have alerted me to what? I don't know. <laughs> they alerted, but I'll go in and of course remove all these inside pieces. And I really like this font for uh, these big bold numbers. They are easy to read and read and see and cut when that is what you're looking for. You could of course use a pretty font or a, you know, font with lots of flourishes, make it as fancy as you want. But I thought this would be fun. And uh, my mom likes things to be super easy. <laughs> read was always her big thing so since this one specifically is for her that's what we're going with so from here we're going to cut some transfer tape and I find that you can typically use one piece of transfer tape for at least uh, one row of letters but if you start having problems then just cut a new piece. It's not worth fighting with it. And I just cut a little three by three square. These are small numbers, so you don't need a huge piece to transfer. From here, I like to line it up with the uh, line on the bottom. So the transfer tape has these guidelines and I put it right on the bottom of my number and then I line up this vertical line on the left. And when we do a three by three square like this, that gives me enough configurations of lines that even when we get down to these bigger numbers, I can line it up so that it will be appropriate on our numbers. And then I just use my weeding tool to kind of scrape it. You can use a scraping tool, but this is really, these are little, so you don't really need to. All right, so now I'm gonna use my Cricut ruler and our pocket, and you always wanna make sure we've got the uh, opening up. I have accidentally put my numbers on upside down several times when I was making mine. So now what I like to do is line this baby up with the bottom of the pocket at the bottom of the ruler. I line it up so that the five is in the middle and that puts the seams here at about this quarter mark and this quarter mark, three past the six, three past the four. And now I line up my number with the bottom on this bottom line here and the five being the center. Now you can use any grid you like, any system you like. You don't even have to put them on here using a grid, but I find that that system kind of works well for me and it keeps all your numbers in a generally same position, which is nice when they are all in the book together. I also find towards the end of the numbers when I was getting tired of doing everything as perfect as possible, that simply laying the new pockets on top of the ones you've already laid out in a grid and then putting the numbers pretty close over the old numbers works pretty darn close. It's not gonna be nearly as exact, but if you're somebody who doesn't need it to be perfect, then after you get the first one done, you basically have a grid 
for where all of the later pieces should be. Dun, 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 dun. We're getting close. I do rotate my piece of tape every couple numbers so that we're always working with a sticky portion. I'm not using the exact same quarter of the transfer tape for the entire line of numbers. And there we go. There is the first, first set of pockets done. I'm gonna go ahead and work on the rest of them. You can see that while it's not hard, it does take a minute. And I will be back to show you the end result once they are all finished and put in the book. Dun, 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 dun. So, we now have Moms, which is in a little uh, six-ringed binder. And as you can see, we've got all our numbers, one through a hundred. So it all depends on how you want to do it. I've seen people literally do a pocket a day, but then, you know, that last week when you're doing 97, 98, 99, $100 a day, that's going to be a rough week. Um, I've also seen people, mainly my brother, do, you know, the the back one, a hundred, and then the next week a dollar and kind of switch it up. I think for me, weekly will work better than daily. Mom's gonna try to do bi-weekly so that she can fill it in a year. So that is the goal. Some weeks may be better than other weeks, and that's just kind of how it goes. The weeks that, you know, paycheck week. We may do a couple of the big ones and end of the month, we may do more of the small ones and hopefully that will help keep everything situated. So the only thing I do like more about moms is that the happy planner pages that I got are for seven uh, rings. A standard happy planner is for nine and this is just a cover that I already had. So when you open mine, it's not a perfect fit. I could make a custom cover to fit this, that's seven, um, and then it would be more this size. You can see how this fits better. But I really like this cover. I really like my main cover, so I'm not going to worry about that. I am just going to use it for what it is. Um, the whole point here is to save money, not necessarily to have the best looking notebook. Nobody else is going to see my notebook of cash, but y'all. So I actually saved some money over the last month that I've been working on this to put in here for the first day. So I've got 100 for the last pocket. So I wanted to start off with the hardest one. Dun, dun, dun. One pocket down. And then I've got some smaller bills that I've saved. Might as well put those in. As this gets more full, it will be sturdier. These are so thin and slippery. We've got the five. And I've been playing around with the idea of making a master list for the front there. I can check off which pockets I've filled since I am not going to be going in order. I am just going to be putting in whichever ones I can afford when I can afford it. Ten. And then I've got a bunch of singles. So let's, uh, let's do some of these front pockets. Let's 
Let's see if we can't do the whole first page. That'd be fun. We probably can. And then we will just work on this every week. Obviously, I am better at it than mom. I have so many more pockets already done. She doesn't have any pockets finished. Oh, I need one more dollar to finish the front pocket. It does. I'm just missing it. Three. I'm going to need a fourth one for right there. So I'm going to go ahead and if I have extra money that doesn't quite fit, tuck it in the front. And then when I get a full amount, I can pop it over in one of the pockets. So there we go. That is the budget books completely finished one for me one for mom and uh I'll have to try to update you at some point maybe on Instagram or in the newsletter on uh, how successful these are going but for now I am very happy I still have I think these there was 40 of these sheets in a package and we used 25 per packet mom wants me to just keep going 100 101 102 all the way up to 160, which is I think the number of pockets total we'd have. So either I'll go to 160, or I was thinking about just doing one through 60 again, have some more little pockets. So one of the two, but I'll probably add those in just cause we have them, might as well use them. So hope you guys liked this video. If you decide to do this with us, let me know. Maybe we'll get a group going either way. Uh, happy saving. Happy New Year. Bye, y'all.